Let's talk about JavaScript classes. This video assumes that you have worked in an object-oriented language before, something like Ruby, and that you're familiar with classes. That said, let's take a look at classes in JavaScript. We start by using the class keyword to define our class, and we're going to define an invoice. We're going to open up curly braces, and with that, we've defined a class. Now this isn't very useful. So the first thing we'll do is we'll add a constructor. And we'll say that we want to take in a price and that we want to set this instance of an invoice is price to price. So we know this works by testing console.log and before we do that, we're going to say let our invoice equal new invoice. And we're going to give it a price of $200. So now we'll console.log invoice.price. We'll run that. And there we go. We have an instance of an invoice. We set its price. And then we log out its price. So what happens if we want to maybe get the price with sales tax? We can add a getter method and we'll call this total price. And what we'll do is we'll return this.price times and we'll say we'll use the tax rate here in Tennessee. So cool. All we have to do now is log this out and we'll say total price, but we're not going to actually invoke a function. By using that get keyword, this is just another attribute as far as we're concerned. And there we go. What else could we do here? Well, we could actually define this math right here as a function. And we'll just call this get price with tax. And we'll return this.price times 1.0925. And then all we have to say here is this.getPrice with tax. We just need to invoke that function. And we're not going to change anything here. We're just going to rerun this. Everything range is fine. One other thing I want to show you about classes is that we can actually do static methods. So or class methods. Use the static keyword and we'll say get price. Actually, we'll call this get total price given a price um, as an argument. So here we'll say return price times 1.0925. And then down here, we're just gonna say console.log. And we're not gonna use our instance. We're just gonna call the invoice class dot get total price. We'll give it 100. And cool, we've defined a static method on that class. One other thing that I'll point out that you'll see we do a lot, especially with React, is we can extend classes. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say class invoice PDF. And what we want to do here is extends invoice. So we'll go ahead and set our constructor to take a price and we'll say super price, saying that we want to invoke this invoices constructor. Now we want to find a method that we don't want available on our actual invoice, just on this invoice PDF and we'll call it uh, print. And we'll just say console.log and we'll say printing invoice for and then we'll say this dot price. So now we'll come down here. We'll say let PDF equals new invoice PDF for $500. And then since we're actually logging from that print function, we'll just say PDF dot print. If we run that, we've subclassed invoice, added our own method on it, and it works. We know that because if we try to say invoice.print, it's going to fail. 
sure enough. This is a real basic introduction to classes, and we'll be using them quite a bit in React.